I'll read to you a couple of translations, and this is part two of what we started on January 1st. Let's, let's, and let's, again, let's give it up for the praise team. Put your hands together for the praise team. Our minister of music, Minister Jamar Fleming, yes, put your hands together, yes, yes. And as I always like to say, y'all get a drummer, son, TD. And as Sister Dave said up here, and you know, the one thing I love, Sister Lever, about True Light is we get here and we start with Sunday school. And it's amazing, right, Sister Henderson? Because sometimes, Sister White, as we're preparing, we're thinking, Brother Tompkins, are we in the right place? And then as Minister Lever went forth this morning, I said, thank you, Holy Spirit, Russ, right? And then, Sister Dave, when you got up here and read your scripture, uh, the Holy Spirit, do y'all know he gives, he gives confirmation? He gives confirmation, right? So I'm thinking, boy, thank you, Lord, because I got up early this morning, you all, right? And, and Mother, you know how this is when you believe you got something ready, and then the Holy Spirit says, here, I want you to put some more on it. So that's what I did this morning. So I've been up for a while, and I'm going to read two translations. They had, Brother Tabman, keep that one up there. I'm going to read this other one first. Living sacrifices to God. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you, hold on, I'm using my, I got it here, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. All right? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and the perfect, acceptable will of God. That's my first translation. Y'all see I'm trying to use a little technology, so I had that on my phone, so I didn't have to bring my computer up here again, all right? The second translation is from my Tony uh, Evans study Bible, and Minister Lever, me and you must be studying a lot of the same things, because I heard you mention him while you were teaching this morning, right? The other translation I have, again, talking about a living sacrifice. Therefore, brothers and sisters, that's all of humanity. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in the view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, which is your true worship. True light, we need to talk about true worship. Verse 2, do not be conformed to this age. I wanted to make sure we got two translations today. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern. Minister Lever, you mentioned that. That's one of the words in my last, that's what I was saying, was you in my notes. That happens a lot here at True Light, you all. But I call that the Holy Spirit orchestrating some things that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and the perfect will of God. Before you have your seat, we're going to go to the throne, because you talked about that too, Minister Lever. Do y'all know we can go boldly to the very throne room of Almighty God? Heavenly Father, Father God, we are empty pitchers before a full fountain. We ask right now in the dynamic, holy, and awesome name of Jesus that you fill us with your Holy Spirit. Father God, we need more and more of you and less and less of us. Lord, help us to present ourselves for service. Help us to present ourselves as vessels of honor. Father God, as I like to say, you're not looking for perfect vessels. You just want willing vessels. Help us to put together the plan that you have for us and that we would serve your kingdom in awesome and dynamic ways. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you increase. 
that told me a decrease. Because as the praise team said, it's not about us. It's all about you. We'll be so careful to give you all praise and all honor and all glory because you alone are worthy of our praise, of our adoration, of our love, of our respect. You alone, because of the redemptive work you did on the cross, you alone are worthy. We thank you. We praise you. And it's in your darling son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is part two. And as I think about Deacon Jerome, we're roughly halfway through the first month of the year already. The last time I was up here, we talked about many times starting the year off right. First things first. And also, how do you start your new year off right? Brother Tompkins, I know that many folks just 15 days ago had resolutions of things that they were going to do differently with the start of 2023. I heard Sister Dave talk about some of the changes that she was going to make. And as I met with a group yesterday, Sister Henderson, we talked about us here at True Light going through a transition. And many of us, our roles have changed. But here's what I love. We are embracing Sister Ali to change. So to kind of give some context, Brother Russ, I'm going to say a few things I said, Sister Peyton, two Sundays ago. And again, before I really get started, uh, Minister Derek Dave, I want to thank him because he preached the sermon last week in my absence. Y'all put your hands together for Minister Dave. So when we look at these verses, I thought, and I've gotten to the point, right, where I stopped doing the, that whole New Year's resolution thing. I started saying, right, how can we do some things differently in 2023? Instead of a resolution, Sister Tompkins, how can we get to the point where we are getting closer to the Lord? as we get ready to start a new year. Can we be in the right mindset, mother, that tells us in 2023, I wanna make sure I'm getting closer to the Lord and make sure I am doing what he wants me to do, not what I wanna do. So again, when Paul talks about beseeching the brothers, that's a Greek term. We talked about the last time the Lord wants to come alongside of us. So here's my thing to you all. Don't plan your year without making, making sure you first go to the Lord and have him put the plan together and have him and ask him to come alongside you. And Brother Lieber mentioned being a comforter. He, when he ascended, he said he would not leave you and me comfortless. We have to also invoke the Holy Spirit into our lives as we move forward in 2023. Or I'll say it another way. American Express used to say, don't leave home without it. Wrong. It's a good car. Don't get me wrong. But don't leave home without the Lord. Take him everywhere you go. Because membership has its privileges. Do you know being a part of the Lord's family gives you access to the very throne room of God? So we have to understand that these words referring to the Holy Spirit, this family of words later, uh, listen at these again. I mentioned them before. That's why I'm going to run through this first part so I can get to uh, verse 2. These words beseech you, comforter, Holy Spirit, connotes this, or uh, the connotation of exalting, encouraging, or counsel. How many of y'all need to be encouraged in 2023? The Lord and the Holy Spirit, Sister Barino, will provide that. He will provide you everything that you need. And as Sister Dave said in Sunday school, why do we not access the very things, Sister Lever, that we need? Why do we go to other things and other people first without consulting the Lord? Things that make you go, 
Hmm, Y'all got it. Paul was speaking as a counselor to his readers. And this carried the full weight of his apostleship. So then, therefore, we have to look at his doxology. Again, I stated, go home and look at Romans 11 and 36. We have to understand, understand this. Since all things are for his glory, we must respond by offering ourselves for that purpose. We have to understand we were bought with a price. So what we need to do, again, is get in line with what God wants to do in and through us. It's not our program. It's his program. It's his kingdom. And we have to understand we are servants within his kingdom. When we think about the mercies of God, listen to these, that they are gracious, extravagant, divine graces that Paul expounded upon in the first 11 chapters, including, listen at this, God's love, his righteousness, and the gift of faith. That was all before we get to chapter 12. Again, as I stated before, under the old covenant, there were sacrifices that had to be given. But because Christ, Jesus Christ came, that old system, that old covenant, that old agreement was put to the side. Because you got to understand that Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. As Minister Levin mentioned, he is the ultimate intercessor today. He's the ultimate everything. That's why I like to call him Jehovah everything. Yes, he is Jehovah Shalom. He's all, but just when you roll it all up, he's Jehovah everything. So then as we continue to move forward, when you go home, and as they, we did in Bible study on Wednesday, when you read about Hebrews chapter 9, verses 11 and 12, that talked about Jesus being the ultimate sacrifice. For those of us uh, that are in Christ, we have to understand that the only acceptable worship is to offer ourselves completely under the Lord's control. Yeah, we struggle with that. As I mentioned before, I think I might have mentioned you, Mother Fleming. Some of us love to be in control, right? And as I look around and see what I loved about Sister Fleming, we was here one day and she actually admitted it. Sometimes, Mother, our issue is some of us don't want to admit it. Here, I'm going to tell y'all, y'all, my wife will tell you, Brother Tompkins, I'm a triple A type personality. Not just type A, Sister Henderson. Why? Because a lot of the personality traits that I've done, Jamar, right? It tells us, right, Sister Peyton, what type of personality we have. And I'm a, some of the things they call me a C. That means I want it to be right, right? And other types, of, it says, hey, I'm this, I'm that. But what we have to understand, Minister Lieber, again, is that we are under his control. Why not let him have the control? Because he knows what's best for you and me. But the problem, Brother Stoudemire, is this. We don't want him to have control, not total control. We want him, Sister Vet, to control what we want him to control. With our saved self. I ain't talking about unsaved folks yet here. With our saved selves. But again, as I told y'all before, how can the creation ever be greater than the creator? He knows what's best. So we got to understand. And, uh oh, wait a minute. We got to yield. I was going to pick up my son from Glen Oak the other day. I saw a yield sign. I was thinking the yield was for the other person. You're right, Sister Libra. I thought it was for them. But you know what I had to do? I had to yield. Why do we, I'm not talking about the youth in here yet, I'm talking about anybody in here over the age of 18. Why, Deke, do we have a hard time yielding to what the Lord wants to do with us? I'll tell you part of the problem is because we think once we got to a certain level, it was we going to do and live life on our own terms. If we want to be honest, like I told y'all the other time. Here, kids, y'all listen to this. I think it was you, Giovanni. Here, and y'all, all y'all adults, be honest. How many of y'all said, I can't wait 
to get out of my parents' house. When I thank you, raise your hand. All, all y'all adults, anybody over 18 should be raising their hands in here. Thank you, Nate. Right. Yeah, I can't wait. Right. And I told y'all, I got two. I got two. We got, I should say, we got two. They can't wait. But here, you know what I've been telling them? I'm going to get back to the message. Give me one second. I've been telling them, right? I hope I live long enough. I hope one or two of y'all have kids just like you. I hope I live long enough. The same headache you giving me, I hope that kid gives you. And I'm just going to sit back deep and I'm going to look at it. I just hope. But what we got to understand is that when God is in control, what your reasonable service is, here, I, I, I can identify with this word dealing with logic. It is in, it's in light of the spiritual riches that, riches that the believer enjoys solely as the fruit of God's mercy. So here, translation is, why would I keep bumping my head against that brick wall when the Lord says, I got a better thing for you? Thank you. Thank you, Sister Libra. It is a great question. But we have to understand, logically following, think about this, what God wants us to do because we owe him our highest form of service. That's why we should be following him. We must understand that these ideas of uh, priestly spiritual services, these, they, we, this is what we should be doing. To present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God means total surrender. So, Brother Russ, when we were doing a uh, Bible study last Wednesday, I said, uh-oh, I didn't mean to cuss at y'all. Why do we have a problem surrendering to the Lord? That's our biggest problem. And here's what I know. The Lord wants us in a posture of surrender. Why does he have to drive us sometimes prostrate, laying out before him, before we recognize, you know what, Lord? Thank you. Thank you, Sister Lieber. Lord, this is too big for me. I can't handle this. How many of y'all have life has ever put you, not y'all young people yet, how many times has life put you in a position where you had to put your face to the very ground, level to the ground, where you had to be forced to pray to the almighty God because life got too much for you. Total surrender is what he wants. Think about, and I use this analogy, y'all listen at me. This is a Tony Evans analogy. It's the difference between what the chicken and the pig brings to a bacon and breakfast egg sandwich. Listen to me good. The chicken makes a contribution. The pig gives everything. There's a difference between making a contribution. The chicken just gave some. The pig gave everything. We often, this is us with our saved selves, Deke, we often try to do that with God. We give him an egg here, we give him an egg there, but God wants a sacrifice. God wants a sacrifice of the ham and bacon variety. Think about that analogy. God wants a sacrifice. As I told y'all before, our problem is we keep getting up off the table. I know it might hurt. Chiseling, have y'all ever seen a sculptor? Yes, it hurts. Sister Stewart, I know you know something about pruning. It hurts, but guess what happens in the process? See, that's where we get in trouble. Minister Fleming, we don't want to go through the process. Minister Fleming is a defensive coordinator. So guess what? If the guys don't come to practice, and knowing him as well as I know him, they don't play. Why? Because he's put in a scheme defensively. But us as Christians, we only want the benefits all the time. 
We don't want to go through a process. The Lord has to cut away some stuff that sometimes we've been carrying for too long. He wants us to understand that only total surrender can be called true worship. Uh-oh. Yeah, it got silent in here. Because sometimes we think we're doing the Lord a favor just by showing up, Brother Tompkins. But again, we have to understand we need to give God what he wants. He is clear in what he wants. Some of us say, you know what, I'll give God what I think he wants. No, God is playing in what he wants. The question is, Sister Willie, are we going to give it to him? That's the question. So let's, let's move forward. I think I, I, I got through that part. Now, I know Brother Tavin loves these series. I'm going to try to get this finished today, Brother Tavin, though. But also we got to get to the point, ladies and gentlemen, uh, moving to verse 2, not to be conformed. Yes, that part, Sister Lever. Because here, if the world looks at us and they look at the world and they don't see a difference, how can they make a choice? If it, all things being equal, how can they make a choice? So do not be conformed. Oh, let's look at conform then. It refers to assuming an outward expression that does not reflect what is the in, uh, reality inside. The question is, is there something on the inside that's starting to work its way outside? Or here, I'll use this analogy. This was years ago. I was still working at, gosh, I can't remember if it was society and then it changed the key. But nonetheless, I was a, um, a, a branch manager as, in my rotation as a management trainee. So I go to this branch, mother, that I hadn't worked at. And as I'm walking across in front of the tellers, one of them said, hey, are you a Christian? I hadn't even said anything to her. I remember that. And I, what I'm saying to us as a body of believers, are we walking in a way that folks who don't know us, who don't see us each and every day, can they say, you know what? He or she resembles the very son of God so the father in heaven can be glorified. Think about that. That particular word, conform, implies to Paul's readers that something had already happened. And to not be transformed to this age. Now, I'm old enough to remember what it was in the 70s when folks wore afros and bell-bottom jeans. And here, young people, let me help you. There's nothing new under the sun fads and all those clothing things, a lot of your parents and grandparents and folks around here, they wore what y'all wearing already. Guess what? Hairstyles change. Many of them come back. Fashions, they come back. But what we have to do, again, is be set apart. It's okay to be different. I think, young people, that was a hit rap song. I'm different. It's okay to be different as long as you in Jesus Christ. You should be different. Don't be transformed to this age. Or oh, here, I can tell y'all in the house I grew up with, I don't care what so-and-so is doing, you're not going to do it in this house. We can't get caught up in that. We just can't. Transformed, moving to that word, transformed. The Greek word from which the English word is talking about a metamorphosis. When we think about metamorphosis, we think about what? Caterpillars to butterflies. Because many of us who have seen that transformation occur, there's no way this slinky, slimy little worm can end up being one of God's most beautiful creatures. Think about the change. The question is, have we changed? Are we changing in this way to start a brand new year? How are we changing to be more like Christ? Think about that. 
Matthew uses the same word to describe the transfiguration. Matthew 17 and 2. Just as Christ briefly and in a limited way displayed his outward, his inner divine nature and glory at the transfiguration. Christians should show an outward manifestation of their inward redeemed, because y'all know we have been redeemed, right? Redeemed nature, not once. However, we should be doing that daily. Daily. We should be looking at that transformation daily. When we get up, did y'all hear what Sister Dave said? Yo, our prayer should be, Lord, I'm up. If you would have been here for Sunday school, Minister Lieber talked about having that prayer. Guess what, True Light? That's going to be one of the components that we're going to hopefully work on in 2023 is increasing our prayer life. And it's going to be focused prayer. Now, renewing your mind. We're still in verse 2. Renew renewing your mind. When we think about that type of transformation, it can only occur, listen at me, it can only occur as the Holy Spirit changes our thinking through constant and consistent meditation of Scripture. I'll say it another way, as I said in Bible study. The height of insanity is this, doing the same thing over and over and over and over again and expecting a different result. So the question is, as a body of believers, how can we continue to get deeper and deeper and deeper in the word? Because I'm getting ready to get to something here. The renewed mind is one that is saturated and controlled by the word of God. Saturated. When I think about saturated, I look at a sponge. If you continue to pour water in that sponge, it will absorb, absorb, and then it comes a point where it's oversaturated. How many of us want to live in the overflow? Because we have got so much word, we prayed up, that it starts to ooze out of you. But we got to get to a point, Brother Russ. We got to get to that point. We got to understand you all. We got to notice that this conforming and this transforming of our minds is not of you. It's of someone else. It's of the Trinity working on you. So you got to understand, Sister Vet, I, I don't have the capacity. I don't have the intellect, Sister Peyton, that would say I can make this journey all by myself, Sister Henderson. I got to understand where, and you do too, where your help comes from. Think about this. God has a goal in this re allowing renewal. He himself, him, to, um, to merge, listen at this, merge his thoughts with our thoughts. He wants to merge. He wants to be a part of each and everything you do from the smallest minute thing to something that you say, you know what, Lord, this is bigger than me. I'm going to give it to you. No, he wants to be emerging in your thoughts at all. Thank you, sister, at all times with ours so that he can bring his plans into our lives. Here's what I know about the Lord. He is the perfect gentleman. What he's not going to do is force you. So then subsequently, Deke, we have choice. Here's what I know. We, with our saved selves, make bad choices. But we got to understand it's his plan for our lives. Don't you want the Lord's plan for your life? I know we have, some of us have plans. We do. But make sure, first of all, Lord, if this is not your plan for my life, I can get rid of that because here's what I know. You can save yourself some headaches or you don't have to be fatherly challenged like me. OK, because some of us, we get upset with God when God does not give us what we want when we want it like that promotion. But God can see panoramically and say, if I give you that promotion, you're going to have this headache. You're going to have that heartache. And guess what? What you thought was going to be a good thing, 
Thank you, Sister Lieber. We got to understand that. Why do we sometimes, right, we walk around and we say, Minister Lieber, yes, Lord, to your way, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, to your will, and then we go and do the opposite. Think about this. What God calls in his perfect will, here, y'all know he has his perfect will for your life and his permissive will. Yes. Think about this. With his perfect will, he calls it good, pleasing, and perfect. Some things he'll allow you to have. He'll allow you to have. And then, how many of y'all ever been to that point where he lets you have something and you say, Whew, I wish the Lord would have not let me have it? All right, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the right crowd then today. Listen at this. God has a purpose and a plan for each of our lives. Purpose and plan for each of our lives. But for that one who finds it, or when we find it, we need to surrender. We need to surrender to him. Mr. Lieber, this is where you were in my notes, and I'm getting close to getting done. As part of Romans 1 and 2, y'all heard me talk about in verse 2, Discernment. Yes. Listen at this about discernment. Discernment can also be taught as experience. Again, like the kids I work with. Now, granted, I cut my beard off the other day. I tell them, you don't get these wisdom marks by accident. That's what I call my gray hair. I call them wisdom marks. Life teaches us experiences. Hopefully you get some understanding so that you don't continue to commit those same mistakes. And then there's also wisdom that comes along. And here, young people, I'm talking to you all now. When your parents or guardians are providing wisdom, I know when I was a young person, I was like, you know what? Help me learn from this so I don't make those same mistakes. That's why many times young people, they share those things with you. Not because they're trying to, daughter, keep you from something. They're not trying to keep you from something, but they're trying to say, you know what? Baby girl, I don't want you to make that mistake. Because if you make that mistake, there might be one more after that, one more after that. And it's not, think about that, not keeping you from stuff because we don't want you to. It's because we love you and God gives us parents and grandparents and mentors and mothers in the church to help you young people. All oh, this message is for everybody today. Discernment, listen at this you all. Discernment is essential in making wise decisions. You need to consult with the Lord and get the right discernment. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm, discernment is having, see, Minister Lever, I told you, discernment is having or meaning judging correctly. Discernment means knowing when to speak and when to be silent. Uh-oh, some of us get in trouble with that one. Because we are all, oh, see, thank you, Sister Lever. I know I'm speaking right now. Yes, when to speak and when to be silent. Listen at this. Discernment also means wanting what God wants. Not what you want, what God wants. When you go home, look at Matthew chapter 7, verses 9 and 10. The child in Jesus' example asked his father for bread and for fish, good and necessary items. If a child asks for a poisonous snake, would the wise father have granted his request? It goes on, Sister Stewart, to say, we being bad parents give good gifts. How much more will your heavenly father do for you with the right discernment? God knows. Think about this. God knows. 
Many times we might be praying for snakes. We don't think they're snakes. And does not, listen at this, God does not give us what we ask for, even though we persist in our prayers. Mm -hmm. As I look around here, some of y'all, the Lord said, no, you keep praying harder. And then, you're, then you start thinking the affirmative, affectionate prayers of the righteous avail of much. Uh, y'all try to reason and try to get to a point where you're negotiating with God. You know you can't negotiate with him. And as we come to know God better, after, his, after knowing that he is our loving father, we learn to ask for what is good for us, and then he'll grant it. So let me share y'all a story real quick. I'm almost done. I remember Pastor Fleming before I got my driver's license. Some of y'all might remember this. They came out. A lot of kids were getting mopeds, wife. And I lived right across the street from Martin School. Never forget it. Saw a friend of ours. She was riding. She was riding over her grandparents' house, which is two doors down from. I'm like, man, that's, that's nice. A moped. And I went to my dad. I asked my dad, can I have a moped, dad? My dad, he didn't even call it a moped. Let me tell y'all what he called. He called it a low pad. Not a moped. So, you know, and here, I had it ready. I, I had the presentation. If it would have been a PowerPoint back then, mother, I would have had that too. And then he said, I'm not going to buy no low pad. I'm going to tell you that now. Or he used to tell me, I'm going to tell you that in the front. Not in the beginning, not at the start. I'm going to tell you that's in the front, right? And then he said, you know what? I'm not going to do this. Because here, pretty soon, I know what you're going to want. I don't think y'all hearing me. He, as a father, said, I'm not going to buy that. I'm not going to spend good money for that because pretty soon, once you get your driver's license, I know what you're going to want. I know you're going to need something like a car. That's like God. Many times, he will not give you what you think you want. He will always provide your needs. And then if you live in the right way, he'll grant those wants. The last point about discernment. Discernment is an essential part of spiritual growth. True light, in 2023, we got to focus on spiritual growth, which is encompassing prayer and some other things we're going to work on. When you go home, look at Hebrews 5 and 14. Listen at this. You will never be able to eat solid spiritual food and understand the deeper things of God's word until you become better Christians and learn right from wrong by practicing doing right. Case in point, Minister Lever, I never met your dad, but I've been around you long enough when he used to tell you right is right and wrong is thank you, Sister Lever. We got to understand if we want a deeper relationship with the Lord, that's going to cause us, Sister White, to do some things we haven't done before in ways we haven't done before. So I might as well let y'all know, True Light, as I was reading on the plane last week, eventually next month, right now, I'm thinking February 1st through the 8th, we're going to talk about this more, a corporate fast. Because here's what I know and here's what I read. Sister Peyton, fasting, and I know some of you might not be able to do it, but we'll talk about the levels. Here's what I know about fasting. What it means, you are giving up some things. You're giving up some things so that you can get closer to the Lord. And here's what I know. Giving up whatever it is we got to give up to get closer to the Lord is worth whatever we got to give up. In order to grow from infant Christians to mature Christians, we must learn discernment. 
We must, we must train our consciences, our senses, our minds, our bodies to distinguish good from evil. Can we recognize, you talked about this brother, can we recognize temptation before it traps us? Can we tell the difference between the correct use of scripture and a mistaken one? Can you tell what's real for what's counterfeit is what I'm trying to say. Listen at this, our capacity to feast on the deeper knowledge of God, solid spiritual Christian fuel is determined by our spiritual growth. My question to True Light and those joining us online, rhetorical in nature, is this. Do you want to grow more spiritually in 2023? That might be Sister White's slogan. Spiritual growth in 2023. I know it don't rhyme yet, but that's one of the things, several things that's been working on in inside of me. Do you want spiritual growth? I know folks want financial growth. I know that. People set financial goals, but are we going to set parameters for spiritual growth? Too often, we want God's, listen at this, we want God's banquet before we are spiritually capable of digesting it. Many times we want God's banquet before we are able to digest, we're not able to digest it spiritually. Think about this. Why would you ever give a five-year-old the keys to a car and say, just go on by yourself? You wouldn't do it. And again, God will give you the desires of your heart, but he's not going to give you something that you're not ready for yet because it could be a distraction for you. And you can walk around popping your collar like it's you, and then you get to the point where you stop praising and worshiping. He's not going to give you something that you're not ready for. Musicians, y'all can come this way. As you and I grow in the Lord and put into practice what we've learned, I like to call that application. It's one thing to learn it, Brother Tompkins, but we as Christians, we got to get to the point where we are putting application to what we've learned and what we're doing. As we grow in the Lord and put into practice what we have learned, listen at this, your capacity to understand will also grow. That, that means there's some stuff you got to clear out so you can gain greater capacity for the kingdom. Lastly, these hope, hope and words. In order to transform what you do, you must first transform how you think. The doors of the church are open as Minister Fleming sings us a song. Please stand. Doors of the church are open. You can be a candidate for baptism or you can come on your Christian experience or if you need prayer. And again, it's not about joining True Light specifically. When I say this, I know it's old school. We would even write you a letter to go to the church of your choice. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What a wonder you are, Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are, oh, Jesus, what a wonder you are. Somebody call him a healer, say, healer, healer, healer. What a wonder you are, healer, healer, healer. What a wonder you are, say healer, 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 healer. What a wonder you are, oh, 
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. At this time, it gives me the distinct privilege of extending to you the offer to contribute to our ministry. Amen? Amen. We can do it several different ways, whether you are sitting here in the sanctuary with me or whether you are watching online. We have several different ways you can do it. You can give via cash app. You can give via our church app. True Light Christian Ministries has a church app. And if you go to your smartphone, if you go to the app store on your smartphone and look up True Light Christian Ministries, you can download the app. You can listen to all of the sermons um, that have been uh, given here at True Light. You can give there and you can keep up with the events that are happening at True Light. Amen. Amen. You can also text to give and you can also write the check and send it here to the church amen? amen if you are in the sanctuary with me today you can deposit your tithes and offerings in the receptacles here on the stage and know that each and every cent is used towards the upbuilding of his kingdom amen amen, amen. we just want to make you aware of a couple of things that are coming up tomorrow is martin luther king day as the children have have um, let us know and there is the annual Leela Green uh, Martin Luther King celebration, which will be held at 12 noon, 12 noon tomorrow. And that will be, I believe, at the um, Southeast Community Center. So if you want to participate in that, that's a free event. It's held every year. It's a really good event. Please go down and celebrate. Martin Luther King Day is not a day off, but it is a day on. So we want you to make sure you do something nice for somebody. Amen? Amen. And I also, I want to start to announce, and you can let your friends know, um, the Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated Stark County Alumni Chapter is sponsoring a series um, where we are making connections. And this is called, this is also with a group called Metamorphosis. It's a three part breaking down barriers to employment series three part so we know that there are things that happen that keep people from getting a job amen and so what we want to do is try to break down those barriers so the first thing that's going to happen part one is going to happen on march 4th 2023 from 10 a.m to 2 p.m we're going to be resume building and giving you interviewing skills amen this is for anybody, whether you have barriers or not. If you want to sharpen up your skills, if you want to touch up your resume, we invite you to come out. Amen. That's going to be at the Tempkin Career Campus, um, Tempkin High School, located at 521 West Tuscarora Street here in Canton. Part two is going to be record sealing and expungement and driver's license clinic. Amen. Amen. That is going to be on April 22nd. And that's going to be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's going to be at Trinity Gospel Temple. If you know someone is having issues with um, points on their license or fines 
or they have something that they want to try to get expunged from their record, this is a workshop for them to at least come and get the information. Amen? Amen. We're going to be working with some judges, um, some magistrates, and, and whoever can make those things happen. But we want you to come out and be a part of that. Let folks know that you know may have an issue with that. Come out because we are trying to help them remove those barriers so that they can get employment. Amen? Amen. Amen. And then part three. Part three is going to be what we call the town hall. And it's going to be networking, training, and a job fair. Okay? A job fair. So we're going to be bringing in employers that work with folks that may have some things on their record. Amen? Amen. This is going to be on May 6th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It's going to be, again, at the Tempton Career Campus. So we will be put, placing this information on our website. We want you to invite your friends, invite your neighbors, come on out. It doesn't matter whether you have something on your record or not. You want to touch up that resume, come out. Because you know what? If you go to a professional to have your resume touched up, you're going to pay some money. Amen? Amen. So we want you to come on out and, and be a part and let someone else know so that we can help them to remove those barriers. And, and even if they are currently in a job, it's just sometimes removing those barriers just lifts that weight. Amen? It's like paying that credit card off, right? Woo! Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we want you to make sure that you let, let folks know we will be putting this on our, our website. Amen? Amen. Have a blessed day. All right. Let's make sure we pay attention to the announcements. A lot going on. Um, again, it's a blessing to see all of you and those of you that joined us online. Again, thank you for coming and we look forward to seeing you on Wednesday for Bible study and also next Sunday. And, and again, we know that somebody will bring the word of God. It could be me again or associate ministers be ready. Mm -hmm.